From Washington, this is VOA News. A Ukrainian troop withdrawal from a contested city. I'm Ira Melman reporting. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko says Ukraine has pulled most of its troops out of the city of Debaltseva. Poroshenko said in comments on his official Twitter account that the Ukrainian army has withdrawn out 80 percent of its troops and two more columns have yet to leave town. Poroshenko denied claims by the Russian-backed rebels that the Ukrainians were encircled. He says the troops were leaving Debaltseva with weapons and ammunition. Russia's President Vladimir Putin on a visit on Bu- to Budapest Tuesday suggested that Ukrainian forces should lay down their arms. The United Nations Security Council is scheduled to hold an emergency session Wednesday on the crisis in Libya, a country that has struggled for political stability while militia groups and an internationally backed government battle for power and territory. A government in neighboring Egypt directed its attention on the situation this week after Islamic State militants beheaded 21 Egyptian Coptic Christians in Libya. Egypt's Foreign Minister Sama Hassan Shokri Salim told reporters in New York that Arab diplomats are working on a resolution that would include measures to halt the flow of weapons to the militias. The legitimate government is in uh, dire need of support, uh, whether politically or uh, militarily, in the provision of equipment uh, that have been restricted by the Security Council so that it can undertake its responsibility to defend the Libyan people and the third nationals uh, on Libyan territory. He also said a political settlement in Libya where parallel governments are operating, uh, were operating would not eradicate military ideology. This is VOA News. Uh, The number of Afghan civilians killed by conflict-related violence rose by 25 percent last year to the highest level since at least 2009. That according to a new United Nations report released Wednesday. The U.N. assistance mission in Afghanistan, UNAMA, said the fighting killed 3,699 civilians and injured 6,849 others, including a record number of deaths among both women and children. Georgette Gagnon is the human rights director for the U.N. agency. We found that 43 percent of all civilians killed and injured in ground engagements was caused by the anti-government elements. 26% by the pro-government forces. And in 29% of ground engagements, UNAMA could not attribute the civilian casualty to a specific party. Myanmar has declared a state of emergency and imposed a three-month period of martial law in a northern region that has seen deadly clashes between government troops and ethnic minority rebels. The move was announced in a late Tuesday television address by President Tensen comes as civilians in the Kokang region continue to flee the fighting, which has killed at least 50 troops and 26 rebels, that according to government figures. Tuesday, two people were wounded when a Myanmar Red Cross convoy was hit by gunfire as it carried civilians to safety in Lukai near the Chinese border. It is not clear who was responsible for the attack, though the government blamed the rebels. The British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says that Syrian forces backed by Hezbollah fighters seized several villages from the rebels near Aleppo, Syria's largest city. The number of casualties in Tuesday's fighting is unclear. The Human Rights Group says the government forces are seeking to cut off a key rebel supply route between Aleppo and the Kurdish and the Turkish border. Aleppo has been one of the centers of the fighting in Syria, but the United Nations envoy to Syria said Tuesday fighting there might soon come to an end. 
U.S. President Obama is focusing Wednesday on the need to combat the underlying ideologies that entice otherwise modern individuals, including many disaffected youth, to join violent extremist movements. Obama is convening a White House summit on the threat of violent extremism. It is not the summit he envisioned. Planned for last October, the summit never happened before the midterm elections. In the months since, the situation has gotten worse with the Islamic State group metastasizing and European cities learning firsthand that extremism's reach is not confined to the Middle East. I'm Ira Melman reporting from Washington.